The 9K32 Strilla 2, whose NATO reporting name is SA7 Grail, is the Kalashnikov of Man Portable Air Defense Systems or MANPADS. Since the late 1960s, nearly all nations that have deployed their air units in combat have tasted its bitterness or at the very least felt its fear coursing through their veins. Today we're investigating the 9K32 Strilla 2, the Soviet style of MANPADS. The 9K32 Strilla 2 is the first Soviet manpads. Thanks to its relative simplicity and low cost, it has been distributed widely among all pro-Moscow countries and various guerrilla and terrorist groups worldwide. Despite its low hit rate and even lower kill rate, the SA-7 has achieved its design aim of forcing enemy pilots to fly above the minimum radar detection altitude, making them vulnerable to higher echelon air defense systems. Therefore, it led to changes in close air support, strike and bombing tactics, paving the way for wider use of modern guided air-to-ground munitions from longer ranges and higher altitudes. The first international presentation of the FIM-43 Red Eye in 1958 naturally prompted the USSR to develop its own system in 1960. Moscow assigned several defense industry enterprises to the task. The Soviet Army evaluated two primary competitors, the 9K31 Strela 1 and 9K32 Strela 2, ultimately selecting the latter, which proved to be a significantly smaller and lighter package. The 9K31 Strela 1, whose NATO reporting name is SA9 Gaskin, was modified into a mobile system. The flight tests commenced in 1964 and development was finalized in 1967. The initial variant the 9K32 Strela 2 with the NATO reporting name of SA-7A Grail Mod Zero entered service in 1968, five years behind schedule. Its primitive uncooled 0.2 to 1.5 micrometer wavelength lead sulfide seeker head featured a narrow field of view of 1.9 degrees. It couldn't discriminate chaff flares and occasionally locked onto and tracked solar reflections from clouds. The missile was effective only when tail chasing. The 9K32M Strela 2M variant was developed swiftly to address these issues, bearing the NATO reporting name of SA7B Grail Mod 1. It also featured the 9P58 grip stock, specifically designed to optimize missile launch timing. Following tests in 1969, its series production commenced in 1970. The missile had a head-on engagement capability for only helicopters and piston-engine aircraft. Furthermore, the new variant weighed 0.78 kg more. Its effective range increased from 3,400 meters to 4,200 meters, and its effective altitude was also elevated by 800 meters. In fact, the Soviet Army regarded the SA-7B as a stopgap solution until the more advanced 9K-34 Strela 3 known by its NATO reporting name SA-14 Gremlin, was ready. However, the Strela 2 was a low-cost and easy-to-produce manpads. It required minimal training and proved far more effective than heavy machine guns and light anti-aircraft guns, as well as being significantly more mobile. Thus, the 9K32 was ideal for pro-Moscow countries, many of which had only recently gained independence, grappling with a fragile economy, and a shortage of trained human resources, or pro-Moscow factions striving for independence or a communist revolution. It was also ideal for the Soviet Army, which had originally intended to utilize the manpads for battalion-level air defense. Subsequently, all armies within the Warsaw Pact deployed the Strela 2s in their armored personnel carriers and armored fighting vehicles, including logistics trucks operating near the front line. The entire 9K-32 system includes the 9M-32 missile, a 5x reloadable launch container canister, a grip stock, and a thermal battery. The Strela 2M can also be employed with a small passive RF direction finder affixed to the front of the operator's helmet, which detects emissions from aircraft radars and radar altimeters. The manpads can be equipped with the 1.9kg Mowgli 2 night sight, providing a 24 degree circular field of view and a 2.5 times magnification. Its detection range in starlight condition exceeds 4,500 meters. 
The prep time for the 9K32 is 6 seconds. The gunner first detects and identifies the target either visually or by using a separate IFF interrogator and then activates the ground power supply unit to energize the grip stock seeker and the electronics unit. The automatic target lock and launch mechanism is activated by pulling the trigger. Subsequently, the onboard power supply unit is activated, emitting a distinct sound. The gunner, who must input a lead angle into the target's flight direction, understands that the target parameters are within acceptable limits as indicated by the continuous illumination of the red pilot lamp on the site and the sound of the buzzer. If the launch conditions are inaccurate, the seeker is automatically caged while disrupted light and sound signals notify the gunner to re-aim. The booster accelerates the missile to between 27 and 31 meters per second by rotating it clockwise at a rate of 19 to 21 revolutions per second. It consumes all its fuel in the tube to protect the gunner from the effects of the exhaust. After leaving the launcher, the missile deploys its tail and control fins, disables the first safety mechanism and activates the self-destruct timer. Then, at a distance of over 5.5 meters, the sustainer engine ignites and accelerates the 9M32 to 430 meters per second, maintaining that speed. After traveling to 120 meters, the missile arms the fuse by disabling the second safety mechanism. Throughout the flight, the seeker head consistently determines the target's angular velocity and the missile adjusts its course accordingly. The self-destruction mechanism activates after 14 to 17 seconds of flight if the missile misses its target. The Strilla 2M is effective against targets traveling at a speed of 260 meters per second in follow-on engagements or at a speed of 150 meters per second in head-on engagements. The launcher and missile weights of the Strilla 2M are 4.95 and 9.6 kilograms respectively. The infrared passive homing 9M32M has a length of 1.44 meters, a diameter of 72 millimeters and a wingspan of 0.3 meters. It features solid fuel booster and sustainer rocket motors. The Srilla 2M's top speed is 430 meters per second, in other words, Mach 1.3. The missile's effective range extends to 4,200 meters and its maximum effective altitude is 2,300 meters. As a life extending modernization provided by the joint venture between LOMO JSC and Kalona KBM, the Strilla 2M2 variant features the dual-channel 9E46M infrared seeker. The ship-based model of the manpads utilizes a dual or quadruple launcher. Its NATO designation is SAN-5 Grail. The MI-24, MI-2 and HN-42M Gamma helicopters can launch the air-to-air -air version of the 9K32. Produced under license by Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia and Poland, the Strela 2 also has locally reverse-engineered copies and enhanced variants. The HN5 in China, the Ainal Sakri in Egypt, the Hasun Chon in North Korea, the Anza Mark I in Pakistan, the CA94 in Romania, the Strela 2 MM in Ukraine, and the Strela 2 MA in the former Yugoslavia. The last one is also manufactured in the successor states of Yugoslavia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Serbia and Slovenia. The Strela 2 has participated in nearly every regional conflict since 1968. It was baptized with fire in 1968 during the War of Attrition. The Manpads achieved its first victory a year later when it shut down an Israeli A-4 Skyhawk. Between 1968 and 1970, the Egyptians launched 99 missiles, leading to 36 Israeli aircraft being damaged or shut down. During the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the Arabs fired 4,356 Strela 2, achieving a very low success rate. According to various sources, the missile could shoot down only 2 to 4 aircraft and damage another 26 to 28. However, the Israeli pilots could not fly at low altitudes due to the combined effectiveness of the SA-7, ZU-23 and ZSU-23-4, which made their jets easy targets for the SA-6 and SA-2s. The Israeli Air Force remained ineffective over the Sinai until the tanks eliminated the Egyptian air defense batteries. In 1974, Syria downed 11 Israeli aerial targets within two months. In 1975, 
This relatives fired by the Dofar Liberation Front shut down an Omani BAC-167 Strike Master, a Hunter FR Mark 10 jet, and an AB-205A helicopter, and damaged three others beyond repair. A year later, the same communist separatist group also downed an Iranian RF-4E Phantom. During a photo reconnaissance mission over Lebanon on September 23, 1983, an Etendal 4P was hit by a 9K-32. However, the aircraft successfully returned to the carrier Foch. One year later, a US A-7 Corsair was not so fortunate and was shut down over Lebanon. During the 1991 Gulf War, the Iraqi Strela II scored hits on a US AC-130H and a French Jaguar. The former was brought down, while the latter managed to return home safely. In 1997, terrorist groups shut down a Turkish AS-532 Kuga and an AH-1 Whiskey Super Cobra helicopter. The Yemeni Al-Qaeda claims that this man pads shut down a Mirage 2000 of the United Arab Emirates, which has never been officially confirmed. The Islamist militant groups reportedly used a Strela II to destroy an Egyptian military MI-8 on January 26, 2014. Between 1972 and 1975, the North Vietnamese launched 589 Strela IIs at US and South Vietnamese aerial targets, of which 204 achieved hits. Naturally, the North Vietnamese sources assert that these numbers are significantly higher. The country also subsequently deployed the manpads in its conflict and wars against Cambodia, China and Thailand. At least two Thai F-5E Tiger IIs were hit, resulting in one being downed. A Sri Lankan Pukhara fell victim to the Srila II. The Srila IIs did not take sides in Africa and simultaneously fought for both factions in many instances. For example, on April 16, 1978, an SA-7 fired by the Libyan-backed rebels downed an AD-4N Skyraider of the Chadian National Squadron. In return, the Chadians shot down two Libyan Su-22 and two to four Mirage 5s. During the Ogaden War, the Somalian 9K-32s shot down two Ethiopian F-5As and inflicted damage on a MiG-21 BIS. In return, the missile shot down a Somali MiG-17 in the hands of the Ethiopians. In 1973, three Portuguese G-91s and a Dorni 27 fell victim to Strela II. The SA-7 shot down a South African Mirage 3 RZ and an Imbala and damaged at least two more jets. In 1976, the 9K-32, in the hands of the Polisario Front, achieved its first combat success by downing a Mauritania Air Force Britain Norman Defender. Some sources assert that the Royal Moroccan Air Force has lost several F-5A Freedom Fighters and Mirage F-1s over the Western Sahara. During the Rhodesian Bush War, the SA-7s were responsible for the downing of two AL-60 Trojan attack aircraft and one Canberra B-2 bomber. However, the shooting down of the Air Rhodesia Flight 827 in 1979 marked the turning point for the country. Salisbury had the acknowledged that it was losing the war after this incident. During the Bosnian War, Serbian Strela 2Ms shut down a Croatian MiG-21, a British Sea Harrier and an Italian G222. On December 17, 1994, a French Navy Etendard 4P was hit by the manpads but managed to return to the carrier Clemenceau. During the 1999 Kosovo War, Serbian Strela 2Ms shot down at least three drones, several cruise missiles and damaged an A-10 Thunderbolt II. The SA-7 was highly active during the civil wars in Central America. While it successfully shut down numerous transport and liaison aircraft and helicopters in Nicaragua, at least two Salvadoran O2 Skymasters, an A-37 Dragonfly, two Hughes 500s and two UH-1Hs fell victim to the missile. Even the Argentines launched the manpads against the Brits during the 1982 Falklands War, but the outcome was unsuccessful. A 9K-32 fired by Abha separatists down a Georgian SU-25 in 1993. Subsequently, the missile was also employed against Georgian airliners, resulting in significant civilian losses. Even the Russians could not escape tasting their own medicine. 
The Mujahideen were provided with several variants of the Strela II, primarily obtained from China and Egypt. They shot down at least 42 Soviet helicopters. The Chechen forces also downed numerous Russian aerial vehicles using the 9K-32s. Yes, the Strela II is no longer the feared enemy it once was. It has little chance against modern countermeasure systems. However, underestimating this missile could lead to unforeseen losses. Still, fighting in every corner of the globe, the 9K-32 is undoubtedly among the legends. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.